ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's danger on the trail ahead! Oh, Silver! Away! The Diamond D Ranch was owned by John Noble. Its broad rolling acres and broken woodland was bounded only by the terms of the original Spanish land grant. Multiply by four the distance a horseman can ride from sunrise till sunset. And on this far-flung range... Successive generations of the Noble family had built a vast cattle empire. John Noble was justly proud of it and confident that when his days were done, Tommy, his only son, would prove worthy of so large a trust. But unlike his father, Tommy never gave the matter much thought. His principal interest at the moment was responding to good-natured jives from the Diamond D cowpunchers. Look at him, boys. A silk shirt, red-stitched Coffeeville boots, and a brand-new Stetson. Mr. Pants appears himself. <laughs> yes, sir. That Tommy's got himself fixed out to do some highfalutin. That right, Tommy? It might be. Eight to five, there's a girl in this somewhere. He ain't dressed that way to rope any steers. <laughs> of course he ain't. The boy's going courting. <laughs> it's broad daylight. How can you go courting in the daytime? Milligan, just because you're so ugly, no woman would look at you in daylight. No sign Tommy has any trouble. Why don't you cow folks lay off? <laughs> Who is it, Tommy? That uh, Cory girl that's nesting down by Clear Creek? What if it is? Nothing, except that her pa's a nester on Diamond D Range. Well, that's not her fault. I'm going to talk to Dad about it anyway. If he don't talk to you first. Pepper the foreman was just saying a few minutes ago that... Well, here comes Pepper now. Uh, Tommy... Oh, Tommy. What do you say, Pepper? Your dad wants to see you, Ken. Where is he? In the house. I'll go right in. I wouldn't do it right now if I were you. He's talking to Merrill Ryan, the land agent. And you know what kind of a mood that puts him in. Yeah. If he's talking to Ryan, I'll wait a few minutes. No need of making him any matter, and he must be right now. as well as I do. These nesters haven't any right to be in my range. They have a legal right, Mr. Noble. The government says any American citizen can homestead 640 Worthless acres. Worthless lot of sad busters, dirt scratchers. Their homesteads are all registered, legal and proper in my office, Mr. Noble. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, I guess there's only six or seven of them. They're all down the valley close to Clear Creek. Might as well let them stay. I'm glad you feel that way. In those six or seven nester families, there are ten or twelve men who might prove to be tough if you tried to run them off. Tough? When they're living on my land? 
Why, I'll stamp out those dirt lice so quick they'll never know what hit them. Yeah, that reminds me. I'm going to ride over Cottonwood Canyon Way this afternoon and see if any of them moved in there. Now, Mr. Noble, there's really no... Oh, excuse me, Dad. Well, you... that's all right, Tommy. Ryan and I have finished our business. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I'll be getting along. I'll see you later, Mr. Noble. So long, Tommy. So long, Ryan. Oh, uh, you say you're riding towards Cottonwood this afternoon, Mr. Noble? Yeah. Well, be careful. Remember what I told you about some of those nesters? I can take care of myself. Pepper said you wanted to see me, Dan. Yeah, what's this I hear about you courting one of those nester girls? Hmm? I'm not exactly courting her, Dad. We've been riding together a few times. Mm -hmm. and... What's her name? Callista. Callista Corey. Corey, huh? Yeah, that's that skinny shank down brave with a place on clear creek, ain't it? He's a widower. Callista keeps house for him. Well, Tommy, whatever you do is your own business. I believe in young folks living their own lives. But I don't like nesters, and they don't like me. You're like Callista. I'll bring her home sometime. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's where you're heading now, huh? Down to Clear Creek? Unless you have something for me to do. No, 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 no. Run along. I'm going to ride out to Cottonwood. See that no more of those sodbusters light my range. I'll tell Callista what you said about young folks. I mean, I'll tell her sometime. Maybe not today. So long, Dad. So long, son. Oh, oh boy, how oh there. Oh. Hi, Callista. Hello, Tommy. What you doing with that tin pail? I'm going to pick blackberries. Want to help? I'll try. I've never picked any of them. <laughs> Come on. What's all this stuff growing around here? My garden, silly. Tomatoes, green beans, lettuce, turnips, radishes. Do you really eat this truck? Of course. Tommy, do you mean you've never eaten a fresh vegetable? The only kind of food the Chinese cook at the ranch ever dishes up comes on the hoof. Oh, you need an education. <laughs> Maybe I do. What are those weeds over there? Those aren't weeds. That's pie plant. You really mean it? Some folks call it rhubarb. You mean pies grow on it? No, no. You make pies with it. Well, I'll be doggone. I hear the blackberry bushes. Don't be so smart. I've seen blackberries before. Then help me fill the pail real fast. Just watch me. I'm greased lightning. <laughs> <laughs> John Noble rode along the trail to Cottonwood Canyon. His thoughts were in a turmoil. At heart, he was a peaceful man, but the steady encroachment of nesters on Diamond D range infuriated him. He'd given orders that they be run off, and he meant to see those orders obeyed. Uh, steady, boy. This trail is tricky. Suddenly, without warning, the afternoon calm of Cottonwood Canyon was broken by a rifle shot. Oh! It's plum full to the brim. Thank you, sir. You know, Callista, we've known each other for almost six months now, and... Yes? Well, we like the same things, everything like that. And, well, I've been thinking... I've been thinking... I know, Tommy. I... I've been thinking the same thing, too. Have you? But we can't do anything about it. Not as long as your father's as mad at pawn me as he is. Dad's not really mad, Callista. One of the men from your ranch was over here yesterday. He gave us three days to get out. I know, but he's changed his mind about nesters, about you and your pa, I mean. Nesters. I hate that word. So does Dad. We're farmers. We're homesteading this land. And we'll contribute just as much to its growth as your father with his cattle. I know. But it's hard to convince a cattleman. Say... Why couldn't your father go to work for my dad? There are almost a hundred punchers on the ranch. They could eat the stuff he grows and... Why, Tommy, that's a wonderful idea. Maybe we could get them together that way. Sure we could. Pa's out hunting now, but when he comes back, I'll tell him. Sure. And then this fall... About harvest time. Roundup time. I said harvest time. <laughs> Callista, if you're going to stay here in the West, you'll have to learn that fall means roundup. Not to me. 
I'll always call it harvest. How are you going to harvest a bunch of steers? Tommy, who's this coming? Looks like Pepper, Dad's foreman. That's Cassidy and Milligan with them. I wonder what they want. Oh, 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 steady. Are you hombres out riding for your health? No, we're not, Tommy. We came to get you. What's the matter? Might as well give it to you straight. Your dad's been shot, kid. Ambushed out in Cottonwood Canyon about an hour ago. Dad. Shot. He's not. He's dead. From all the signs, it was a Nestor's bullet that killed him. Oh, Tommy. Is I... your father around, ma'am? I'd like to talk to him. Why, well, no. Pa's not here. He... He's out hunting. Oh, hunting, huh? Callista, I'm going back home. I'll see you later. Of course. I'm so sorry, Tommy. Please let me know if I can help in any way. He'll let you know, all right. Come on, kid, let's ride. The following afternoon, Tommy Noble returned to the little homestead on Clear Creek. He rode alone this time. Hello, Tommy. Can I speak to your father, Callista? Well, he isn't here, Tommy. He, he didn't come home last night. I... I'm worried. You told me he went hunting yesterday. Did he say where? Well, by Cottonwood, I guess. I see. My dad was murdered yesterday. Murdered by a nester. Well, how can you be sure? He was who... shot in the back. And the bullet that killed him was a round ball from an old-fashioned squirrel rifle. A rifle just like your pa carries. Tommy, how can I you I had a long that... talk with Pepper and the boys at the ranch. We all agreed that every nester on the Diamond D range must be off by tomorrow. Or we'll burn down your shacks. You mean... You heard me. You and your pa are no better than the rest. Tommy, I can't believe you do this with no more evidence than you have about your father's murder. When your pa comes back, if he does come back, remember what I've said. I've given you a better break than you deserve. Tommy, you can't do it. You can't push us off our land. It's my land, Nestor. We're staying right here, cowboy. You've got till tomorrow at sundown. Get up. Not far from the Lone Ranger's camp in a wooded gulch near Cottonwood Canyon, Tonto and Dan Reed were inspecting some rabbit traps they'd set the day before. Uh, nothing in this one either, Tonto. We're not having much luck. Hey, look, what are these tracks? Uh, me not know, Dan. Oh, look here. Heavy footprint. Good hunter not walk like that. We trail them. Come. Yeah. Tracks are getting deeper, Tonto. I... They're not straight. Like the man was drunk or something. Uh. And they lead right up. What? Why, it's a cave. Uh. Come. It's a very big cave, though. I don't see how anyone... you, Pruitt? Is that Pruitt? Uh, no, we're not. Stand right there. And don't make a move. Yeah, but we're not... My rifle's covering both of you. Now get your hands up. Uh, who are you? What you doing around here? We were just following some tracks. Trailing me, eh? Zip said there was a posse. Well, it's too dark back here for me to see who you are, but well, we're not from a posse or, or any part of one. Tommy! 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 What was that? Just a friend of ours. He, he's trying to find friend us. Friend so... of yours, eh? And I suppose you and the Redskin ain't part of the Commons posse. No, we're just been trapping up here. Tommy! Tommy! Go on, Injun, answer him. Tommy! Now... Both of you move back here. Out of that light. I said move. You've made a mistake. What Shut up. Oh, no. Then. Not a peep out of either of you. Now, when this hombre stumbles in here, I'll know who he is. If he's dressed like a cowpuncher, I'll drill the critter before he can open his mouth. <laughs> Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Threatened by a rifle in the hands of a man they could hardly see in the cave's darkness, Tonto and Dan Reed obeyed his commands. They could hear the Lone Ranger coming closer to the cave, but they dared not warn him. Dan! Tonto! Go on. Tell him you're here. I wanted to walk right in. Uh, me too. Wait, Tonto. Let me. Here! We're inside the cave. Where? Tonto got lost. We came in here. Shut up, kid. That's enough. I don't see how you could... Get him, Tonto. Um, oh, get him. Dan, what's wrong? He was going to kill you. We had to throw that rock yes, in Yes, I know. Your warning put me on guard. But, gee, I hoped you'd understand what I meant. You was quit thinking, Dan. I knew there was trouble when you said Tonto got lost. Who is this man? I don't know. The minute Tonto and I walked in here, he pulled uh, a... him. Quiet now. Oh. Me hold him. Oh, my leg. Don't touch my leg. Bring him out in the light, Tonto, so we can see. Uh. Oh, please, be careful. My leg. What's wrong with your leg? No mask. An outlaw. No, we're not outlaws. Now, what happened to your leg? Busted, I guess. Fell yesterday afternoon. In this cave? Oh, down the trail. About a mile from here. Well, if that's true, how did you... Zeb Pruitt found me. Helped me up here as soon as I could hide out. Why did you try to shoot me? If you ain't outlaws, you must be part of the posse. A posse that's searching for you. Why? All the punchers at the Diamond D figure I dry gulch their boss yesterday. Diamond D. That's John Noble. Is he dead? I guess he is. But I didn't kill him. What's your name? Sam Corey. I've got a little farm down on Clear Creek. And Zeb Pruitt. Who's he? Another farmer. Or if you're a cowman, guess we're nesters to you. I see. John Noble has been murdered. Naturally, all of the homesteaders are under suspicion. Uh, me in particular. They say he was killed with a squirrel gun, like mine. If you're innocent, the law will prove it. <laughs> law? There ain't no law in these parts except John Noble and Diamond D. Listen, mister, we're fighting for our homes. Homes that are legally ours. And no cattleman like John Noble, his son, or any of his punches is big enough to drive us off. But you can't oh, go. Oh, I've been so worried ever since Zeb told me that... Oh. Drop back as soon as I could, Sam. Who are these hombres? Reach, all of you. Better put down that gun. Yeah, Sam, put it down. These gents are harmless. He's wearing a mask. Are they outlaws? Yeah, like as not, they are. But as long as they're not punchers from the Diamond D, I ain't too inquisitive. What's happened, Zed? We burnt out four of the farms today. Childress, Jessup, Coleman, and Barn. Oh, dirty, sneaking farm. And Tommy Noble told me that we had till sundown. And then they'll burn our place. Tommy, he told you. And after the way he's been hanging around our farm for the last three months, shining up to you... I hate him. Two-faced polecat, just like his old man. I wish I had killed John Noble. Don't I... say that, Paul. Bad enough for them to think you did. I'll pass the word to all the boys, Sam. They're waiting for us at your place. Good. No one of us can fight that bunch alone. But when they ride up to my house, they're going to meet something they ain't looking for. May I ask a question? Well, this is a private fight, stranger. But what do you want to know? If you didn't kill John Noble, who did kill him? I don't know. I wouldn't put it past one of his own cowpunchers. That's exactly what Merle Ryan said when I told him about it today. Who's Merle Ryan? Land agent in this county. Best friend we've got. He's loaned every one of us money so that we could get our crops planted. Why are you horning in, stranger? I may be able to help. Come on, Tonto. Dan. Uh, sure. Hmm. Nosy critter, ain't he? I guess outlaws like them three are always nosy. Maybe they're not outlaws. Wow, well, what's the matter with you, Callista? The big one wore a mask, didn't he? I know, but, but the tone of his voice when he said, I may be able to help, makes me wonder. Here, Silver. I'm Scout. Here, yeah, Victor. We're going back to camp? No, Dan. I want you and Tonto to ride over to the Diamond D. If Tommy Noble is using all of his punches for a raiding party, you can join them without being noticed. I want to know what they're going to do. Sure. City big fella. <coughs> Where are you going? I'm going into town and talk to the sheriff. Uh, where we meet you. Back here, Tonto. I'll be waiting for you. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Come, Victor. What's the matter, kid? Change your mind about the Corey place? No, Pepper, I haven't changed my mind. It's just... Just a... It's the girl, ain't it? You're still sweet on her. I am not. She's a nester, same as all the rest. Only difference is that her pa shot my dad. If 
I ever catch a sneaking sodbuster. We all feel the same way, Tommy. But in the meantime, let's send the girl hiking. Hers is the only place left. No. I'm going to give her a few more hours. We'll wait till midnight. Hey, if you're going to burn her out, then why not? I said we'll wait till midnight. All right, Tommy, you're the boss. And I think you're loco. Hit the dirt, boys. We'll stow away some grub before we do any more rides. Milligan. Yeah? Who was that just rode away? Looked like an Indian and a young kid. Oh, I don't know. No redskins in this outfit. Then we head for Clear Creek at 12 midnight. That right, Tommy? That's it, Pepper. I'll be in the house. You let me know when the time comes. Miss Ryan's office, Sheriff? Yeah, we'll go right in. Better light a lamp, Sheriff. Sure. What's this all about? You know where Ryan keeps the records of homestead deeds? Right in that drawer, I think. Why? Oh, wait a minute. Hmm. This is just about what I expected. They're all like this. What do you mean? You said you saw Mr. Ryan right away about an hour ago. Have you any idea where he went? Told me he was heading for the Diamond D. That's but... where we're going. Come on. Hold on. I ain't got no reason to ride clear out there. Yes, you have, and I'm going to see that you do it. Who? Who's Who? Who? These are friends of mine, Sheriff. Tonto and Dan Reed. How? Hello. Now, what did you find out, Dan? The cowboys from the Diamond D are going to burn down a quarry farm at midnight. It's almost 12 o'clock now. Yeah, they were supposed to do it earlier. But Tommy Noble decided to wait a few hours. If you're aiming to stop those cowpokes from the Diamond D, I'm telling you right now, it can't be done. Tommy Noble can stop them. Our job is to stop him. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come All right, Victor. Get up. You're not coming with us, Tommy? No, Pepper. You and the boys go ahead and do the job. I've decided I don't want any part of Clear Creek, even to see it burn. You're the boss. I say, uh, Merle Ryan's here with us. You got any objections if he goes along? I don't care who goes with you. Just get it over with. Come on, boys. Let's ride. Get up there. Oh, Victor, big fella. Now, wait for me here. I'll talk to Tommy. What the... Mask! I'll reach for your gun, Tommy. I have some important news for you. Who are you? Oh, never mind that. Here, look at these. What are they? Homesteaders deeds. I got them from the office of Merle Ryan, the land agent. What have Nestor's papers got to do with me? Come on, look at them. You'll notice there's a mortgage attached to every one. Merle Ryan has advanced every one of the farmer's money. And they mortgage their claim for security. What about it? Look at the dates. Every mortgage expires tomorrow, providing the owners default their claim by moving off the property. I don't understand. The only man who could profit by their leaving is Merle Ryan. And the only way he could be sure they would leave was to start a range war. Start it with a murder. You mean Ryan was the one? When you find him, I'm sure you'll find a squirrel gun instead of a rifle in his saddle boot. And it wasn't Sam Corey. Pepper and the boys, they rode down there. You to... hurry, you can stop them. Callista, shoot sure. Excuse me, stranger. I got some riding to do. Here they come, Sam. I can hear them. Keep your sights up, boys. We'll get in the first round. All right. Callista. Yes, Paul? You reload the rifles first and keep out of the line of fire. I will. They're almost here, Sam. Hold it! Wait! That's young Tommy Noble riding up from the rear. That's good. He'll get a taste of the first blast. All right, boys. Let him have it!
How is he, Doctor? Better. Much better. A few weeks in bed and he'll be as good as new. Doctor, can I... Sure, go on in. Now, Sam, I'll take a look at that leg of yours. Who is it? Tommy. Callista. What happened? It's all over, Tommy. Several of the men were hurt, but no one seriously, except you. I'll be all right. I mean... The sheriff explained everything. He arrested Merle Ryan, and Ryan admitted the murder. I... I made an awful mistake, Callista. So did I. And I kept on making it right up until I saw you ride in front of all those men and try to stop the shooting. Then I knew. Knew what, Callista? Farmers can get along with cattlemen, Tommy. We can work and live together. The West belongs to all of us. How about you and me? Well, if, if you'll learn that pies don't grow on rhubarb plants... I'll learn anything. If you'll teach me. Maybe by next fall. About harvest time. Roundup time. Harvest. You'll have to learn to say roundup, Callista. Roundup or harvest. What difference does it make? As long as it means us. I am still there. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>